Good evening again, everyone. Uh, it was amazing to see how much uh, science that the glorious Quran contained after your talk. But in most of the examples from the Quran which you gave, it is very difficult to comprehend what the Quran tells before actually the science discovers or invents that particular phenomenon. For example, you said, in the honey, there is healing of humanity in the Quran. And you mentioned it as it's about if a person is maybe say poisoned with a plant, the honey of the plant should be taken. So, what is the use, say, of a almighty holy scripture talking about things which you are only able to comprehend after the real invention is made by science? So, can you tell me now something from the Quran which will be invented by science later or yet to be invented? Well, that's a very good question that I've mentioned many things about science indirectly saying all this was already discovered earlier. And if Quran says something and after science has discovered, so what's the use? Can you tell me something which science hasn't discovered? Brother, that's the reason the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. Why? Because they read the Quran. The Quran has a lot of information on astronomy. So when they read the Quran, they try and do more investigation. They do more research. And that's how they come to know. Quran is a telegraphic message. See, the book of science, only on one subject. In medicine, one subject only requires volumes. So if that way the Quran is, this Quran, most of the human beings, they don't like to read. Oh, such a big book. So if God Almighty wrote in detail, then even a big building, you will require thousands of buildings to contain the message of the Quran. Quran is telegraphic message. So in telegraphic message, many of the Muslims, they read the Quran and they made advances in science. That's the reason we find, if you go back into history, the Muslims advanced in science and technology. But you pose the question, forget about the past. What about today? All what I've mentioned has been discovered earlier, but many of them were discovered by Muslims. Some by non-Muslims, some by Europeans. What about things which science hasn't discovered? Fine. First, I'll tell you those things which science hasn't established, but yet there are high chances, which Quran has testified, and I believe in it. For example, Quran says in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 29, that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created the creatures in the heavens and the earth and has placed creatures in them. So Quran says there is life besides this earth. Today science hasn't proved there is life besides this earth. Scientists say there are high possibilities that life will be there besides this earth. So they're sending rockets, spaceships, moon, Mars. Quran says there's life besides this earth. I believe in it. Science may discover it tomorrow, after five years, after 10 years, after 100 years. Quran says, I believe in it. Today, there are many hypotheses how the world will end. It says that the sun will become big and the world will end. The mountains will fall down. The mountains will become smooth. The ocean will swell up. The world will enter into a black hole. Many hypotheses. Many of these hypotheses, not all, they match with the Quran. Quran says in Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 8 and 9, that the sun and the moon, they will join together. The sun will be buried in darkness. If you read Surah Takhvir, chapter number 81, verse 1, 2 and 3, it says that the stars will fall down and lose their luster. The mountain will fall down to utter ruin. The ocean will swell up. It's mentioned in Surah Infitar, chapter number 82, verse number 1 and 2 and 3, again the ocean will swell up. The stars will fall down. Similar to many of the hypotheses. But Quran says, I believe in it. Quran further says, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 104, we have created this creation, we will destroy it and create a new creation. Science hasn't discovered that yet. Quran speaks about life after death. Science hasn't proved that yet. Quran speaks about heaven and hell. Science hasn't proved about that. Quran speaks about jinn. Today, psychologists say extraterrestrial power. There are some people who get possessed with jinns. Quran speaks about that. Quran speaks the first man on the earth, was well, Adam, peace be upon him. Science hasn't proved, there are high possibilities science will prove. Now, you may ask me that, Brother Zakir, you gave such a good talk on science and technology, but 100% solid proof. You believe in life after death? You believe in jinn? You believe in heaven and hell? You a doctor? Isn't this unscientific? I said, no, brother. I believe that it is scientific. Suppose whatever the Quran has mentioned, 
80% has proved to be 100% correct. I spoke about astronomy, about geology, motorcycle, oceanography, botany, biology, zoology. So just hypothetically, 80% what the Quran has mentioned, suppose, has been proved to be 100% correct. The remaining 20% is ambiguous. Neither right, neither wrong. Not even 0.1% of that 20% which is ambiguous has been proved to be wrong. There is not a single verse of the Quran which can be proved false by established science. Hypothesis. So my logic says when 80% is 100% correct and the remaining 20% is ambiguous but not even 0.1% of that 20% is proved wrong. So my logic says that even that 20% inshallah will be correct. If not today, tomorrow, after 50 years, after 100 years, after 1000 years, Allah alam, God knows, they will prove there is life after death. They will prove there is jinn. They will prove there is hell. There is proof there is heaven and so on and so forth. I can give another lecture on things which science has not proved, but inshallah will prove. Hope that answers the question. Previously, the European scientists, they believed that the earth was the center of the solar system and the universe. And all the planets, as well as the moon and the sun, it revolved around the earth. This was called as geocentrism. And this was believed since the time of Ptolemy in the second century BC till as late as 16th century. Until Nicholas Copernicus in 1512, he propounded the heliocentric theory of the planetary motion and he said it is the sun which is the center of the solar system and all the planets as well as the earth it revolves around the sun and later on a German scientist by the name of Johannes Kepler in 1609 he wrote in his book by the name Astronomia Novia that not only do the planets and the earth they revolve around the sun but they also rotate about their own axis and when i was in school i passed my school in 1982 about more than 25 years back there i too read that the planets and the earth they revolve around the sun and the planets and the earth they rotated about their own axis and the whole solar system, also in the galaxy it revolved, including the sun, but the sun did not rotate about its own axis. In this context, the sun was stationary. But when I read the verse of the Quran, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, which says, It is Allah who has created the night and the day. The sun and the moon, kullun fi falaki yas bahoon, each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. So the Quran says the sun and the moon, besides revolving, they also rotate about their own axis. The Arabic word used here is yas bahoon, derived from the Arabic word sabaha, which describes the motion of a moving body. If I use this Arabic word yas baha for a person who's moving on the floor, it will not mean that he's rolling, it will mean he's either walking or running. If I use the same word for a person in the water, it will not mean he's floating, it will mean he's swimming. Similarly, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same word for a celestial body, it does not mean that it is flying in the air, it means it is moving along with its own rotation. It's rotating about its own axis. So Quran says the sun and the moon, besides revolving, it also rotates about its own axis. And today, science has discovered that even the sun rotates. Since we can't see the sun directly, you get blinded if you see directly. If you have an equipment and have the image of the sun on a tabletop, we find that there are spots in the sun. And it takes about 25 days for the spots to complete one rotation, indicating that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation. Imagine when I was in school, I was taught the sun was stationary, it didn't rotate about its own axis. And the Quran mentioned 14 years ago that it rotates. 
And now, Alhamdulillah, most of the schools have incorporated that the sun also rotates. Further, we read in the Quran. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Yaseen. Chapter number 36, verse number 40. It is not permitted for the sun to overtake the moon, nor the night to outstrip the day. The moon and the sun. Kulun fi falaki yas bahoon. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. Now the scientists say that the orbit of the sun and the moon is different. So there's no question of the sun overtaking the moon. That's what the Quran says. And today the scientists, they tell us that the sun is moving in a direction in the universe to a particular fixed direction, which is called as the solar apex. In the constellation of Hercules, also known as Alpha Lyra, at a speed of 12 miles per second. And today the scientists they tell us that the sunlight we have is due to a chemical reaction which is taking place since billions of years. And one day, this chemical reaction will cease. And so will the light of the sun cease to exist. And so will the life on this earth cease to exist. But the scientists say it will take another few billion years. Quran gives a similar message in Surah Yaseen, chapter number 36, verse number 38. That the sun is running its course for a period determined, to a place determined. The Arabic word used here is mustakar, which has two meanings. Either it means for a period determined, or it means to a place determined. And today science says that the sun is moving to a particular spot known as solar apex, and it will exist for a particular time period. So both the meanings of mustakar, to a place determined and for a period determined according to science is perfect. Imagine, Quran mentions this 1400 years ago.